You know what it is. That's right. It's time to talk money with your money nerd and financial coach. Now, tighten those purse strings and open those ears. It's the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Money Talk with Tiff. I am excited because today I have Kamari Ellis on the line again now. If his voice sounds familiar, you probably heard him in the previous episode where we talked about black wealth and taxes, but you know I had to bring him back because he was dropping so many gems. And today we want to talk about red flags or what to look for when it comes to picking a tax preparer, because I've heard of so many horror stories and we'll probably get into some that Kamari has seen as well. So thank you so much, Kamari, for coming on the show again today. <laughs> My Listen, thank you for having me back. Right. We, we had really fun last time. We talked, talked about a lot of things, black wealth and tax related. But today we're going to talk about something else that's even more fun. I probably. <laughs> for sure. And, you know, I feel like this episode, well, last one too, but this one will help a lot of people um, stay out of tax trouble. And that's just hiring the right person. <laughs> yes. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. What are some things that, well, first of all, first of all, first of all, let's back up because this podcast is all about education. Let's educate the people on the type of tax preparers that they may run into. So, for instance, what is an EA? Um, what is someone that's not credentialed? You know, what type of things can they do? So on and so forth. So most times when people think about tax, they think about a CPA, a certified public accountant. And that is kind of the gold standard when it comes to an account to accounting and tax, so to speak, because their organization has done a wonderful job at marketing the C uh, CPA certification. Um, and if you don't know, it requires, a, it requires a certain amount of college hours and to do a test and then you get admitted to each state's CPA, um, uh, what are they, board, to their CPA board. Um, however, you have CPAs, certified public accountants, who do taxes and prepare taxes. You have people who are enrolled agents, such as myself, um, and then you have some attorneys who do taxes as well, prepare taxes. And then you have people who are, who are called unenrolled agents or unenrolled representatives who do taxes as well. And they're just, you know, your regular people who may have gone to school for it, may have not gone to school for accounting and tax, but they do tax returns. So just to kind of break it down, again, we have a CPA, and I've kind of talked to you about what they do and how you get to that. Mm -hmm. You have enrolled agents that, again, I'm an enrolled agent. And enrolled agent is uh, a license. I'm licensed with the Department of Treasury, a.k.a. the IRS. And I am licensed to help and represent taxpayers to, how can I best say this, to help them with their tax problems before the IRS. So for the most part, there's only three kinds of classes or not classes. There's only three designations that allow that the IRS allows to help people with their tax problems. Gotcha. You have enrolled agents, you have certified public accountants, and you have attorneys. Gotcha. Those three. Gotcha. Gotcha. Anybody nobody else is really able to represent tax clients in front of the IRS. And what does it mean to represent them? It means that I have the ability to negotiate tax bills, payments with the IRS before, um, for my clients on their behalf with the IRS. Your basic person who does taxes and no shade, right? They usually are not allowed to do that. But what, you know, I, hopefully I gave you a good synopsis of that. But, what normally happens is people will go to certain people based on how big of a refund they get. We all see the commercials. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times they say, come get your big refund. And you see a guy jumping out of an airplane with a parachute <laughs> or something like that. Or many of us know, you know, their cousin, sister's boyfriend's homeboy who does taxes out of the back of a gas station. And a lot of people will go to them as well. 
And that can get a little dangerous and a little costly in the long run also. Yeah. So that sounds like our first red flag. (laughs) If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And they're probably doing something illegal to get you that big refund that they're, um, you know, touting out there. And so that's one red flag that you might see. Um, And thank you so much also for going over all of those different designations and, you know, some things that people can think about as they're searching for a tax professional. But let's say, for instance, they're like, you know, I've been going to the same tax preparer. You know, I just want to use somebody that is an unenrolled agent. And so if that's the case, what are some things that they should be looking for if they use just a regular tax preparer um, to make sure that they stay safe um, as far as their taxes? Well, they should. Number one, one thing I see a lot of people get jammed up on is they give their tax people their original documents. Mm. Never give anybody your original documents. Mm. Make sure either they're giving you a copy or you are scanning them and uploading to a portal, but make sure that you do not give anybody your original tax documents. Why? If they go out of business, sadly, there's some accountants I know who've died, especially Mm -hmm. over COVID. It's really hard to get your original tax documents back. Now, in the previous episode that I was on with Tiff, I told everybody to go get an IRS account. And I still believe in that today. Go get to an IRS account because in there you could also pull your transcripts, your wage and income transcripts. Only problem with that is, is that they're redacted, meaning that some of the information is blacked out or covered out. And so it it can also be a little bit hard to reproduce or redo somebody's tax return um, without all the information. But it's a kind of a, 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 a what's the word I'm looking for here? It's another way to go about getting your tax records if you've lost them. Um, The other way is you come to a guy like me and you say, come on, I need my tax records. You pay me. I pull your tax records unredacted where you have all the information so you can do um, your returns uh, without a problem. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I've seen that situation happen a lot. You know, again, sadly, the accounting field, especially with tax accountants, is very stressful. A lot of us have been retiring. Again, like I said, some of us have died and people have had a hard time getting their paperwork back. So it's, it can be very challenging at times. Ah, so that's a need to know slash red flag. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a need to know. I wouldn't call it a red flag. Well, the red flag is people will give says, their, their original uh, documents. Yes. Right. And if they say, oh, well, I need your originals and you can be like, I, I, nope, you just need a copy. <laughs> Yeah, you just need a copy. <laughs> right, right. So that's really good information. And if you missed the last episode, the IRS account is just going to the IRS website and signing up and creating an account there. And then you can look at all your information. So I just wanted to put that out there in case they missed the last episode. And if you did miss the last episode, go back and listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but OK, so we have um, we have making sure that you don't give your originals. Um, what else should people, you know, think about or do when it comes to working with a tax preparer to make sure that they are protected? Well, anytime you are working with a tax professional, you want to make sure they have what's called a P10. Mm. It's called a prepare a tax identification number. Um, there's a whole problem with people who are what's called ghost preparers. They'll do your taxes. They'll do them in turbo tax. You'll pay them, but they won't put their name on it and it'll be under your name. And if somebody's listening, they're like, well, what's the problem with that? <laughs> well, the problem with that is, especially me, since I'm an enroll agent, I am held to a higher standard, right? Um, I have to understand where you're getting said numbers for your taxes from and what are they based on? So, for example, let's say you have a business and you you sell water and you tell me, Kamari, I sold a million bottles of water last year. And I made a million dollars. Okay, great. How did you track that? I don't know. (laughs) I just guessed. Well, we might run into a situation where you are falsifying your records. And Mm. anytime, per the law, you were supposed to prepare a truthful, as truthful and honest of a tax return you can prepare. So you don't want to unintentionally file a fraudulent tax return. 
By the way, there is no statute of limitations on fraudulently prepared tax returns. So if you do something janky on your tax returns, like buy kids and use them, it can come out to you forever. So just keep that in mind. But um, you want to try to do the best you can and just have all accurate information as much as possible. Yes, yes, for sure. And, you know, when you said buy kids, I chuckled a little bit because of the way you put it. But, you know, <laughs> when people be like, oh, let me uh, let me follow your son or let me follow your daughter. It's a real thing. Uh huh. It is. I've seen it. I've seen it. Um, <laughs> yes, you've seen it. And guess what? The IRS knows all about it, too. So like a lot of times people think they can get away with a thing for a year or two and that they've been slick. I tell people all the time, you're not that slick and the IRS is not that dumb. So mm. you might get away with it. Some people do get lucky and they slip through the cracks, but a lot of people get jammed up. A right, lot. right, right. And so that takes me back to the P10. So if they put in their P10 number saying that, hey, I'm the one that filed these taxes, if they are janking, um, it'll go back to them instead of you. Yeah, well, listen, the, I, the taxpayer ultimately has the duty to understand what they're doing. What I mean by that is when you're filing a return, you have, the person, the client has to sign that return. So they're signing off on that. However, if a tax preparer did something crazy, janky, made up some numbers, didn't tell the client about this, the client wasn't involved with that. That comes back to the tax to the tax professional. Mm. The other thing is what I've seen over my lifetime. Like I've I've lost clients because of this, right? Especially some of our um, our uh, ladies and gentlemen in blue. Um, a lot of times they'll have somebody on the job who can get them a bigger return, and th- this is a situation that happened with me. Um, I lost a couple of those clients because they went to somebody that that um, could promise them a bigger refund. And they got a bigger refund. But what happened was that tax preparer got audited by the IRS. Mm. And because the tax preparer, the IRS saw that there was a pattern of these, quote unquote, you can't see me, but I'm putting my my fingers in the air, <laughs> um, of getting them bigger refunds. And they started to dig into those and they saw that they were all done improperly. Uh, and the numbers didn't make sense. So what happened was all the clients or a large portion of their clients got audited as well. And so it kind of just trickled down. It was a tri- trickle down effect that they, they, you know, they got some money for a couple of years, but the interest and penalty that they wound up paying at the end, they wound up paying, paying more money. So just try to find people who are, uh, integral, have character, um, and don't work in the back of gas stations. Right, right. So that, to me, sounds like red flags number three and four. (laughs) And one, so three would be make sure they have a P10 um, and they're putting it on your tax return. Yes. But... Also, because it's not enough for them to just have it. They need to put it on there saying that I I did this. Um, and then also making sure that they are a reputable preparer, because if not, like I didn't even know that tax preparers get audited, too. And oh, yeah. so now <laughs> I'm over here like, you know, thinking about some people that I <laughs> Thinking about some people that, you know, are always claiming they get big refunds for people. And I'm like, oh, so if they get audited, then all their clients is going down with them, kind of, um, from my understanding from what you said, right? Potentially, yes. Potentially. Yes. Wow, that's scary. Um, <laughs> and, and listen, I, I will say this, right? Um, there are a lot of people out there that just key in numbers. I call them tax data entry people. And so they just get the numbers and they put them in, right? But I have no sort this notoriously happens to me. I have business owners and even some um rental, um, real estate rental um investor clients that have terrible books. They don't keep track of anything. They ask me, well, what's deductible and what's not deductible? So a good person should be able to guide you down that road about what's legally deductible, 
what's not deductible and, and help you put that together. And those are things that you can file on your tax returns. So here's a prime example. Um, the new start business owners, they're like, I don't know what to file. And so I'll just start with, are you, do you use your phone for business? Yes. You call your boo or your bae on your phone also? Yes. Okay. So you can write off a portion of your cell phone, mm-hmm. but you can't write off the whole thing because you use it for business and you use it for personal. And the IRS loves to target cell phone usage and write-offs because they know most people don't have separate lines for their um, business for their cell phones. But, you know, you can take a portion of it. Let's say your bill's $100 a month. I know that's probably unheard of these days, but you can write off $50. I know that they have that, right, because everybody uses it by asking them some questions, and that then becomes a legitimate write-off on their tax returns. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I just took away red flag number five is if (laughs) you can't ask your tax preparer questions and they can't answer for you. And this is true story. I've had somebody tell me that they asked their tax preparer and they said, I don't know. I just put in the numbers. (laughs) Then then that is a red flag that that is probably not someone that you would want to be working with because they don't know the tax code and, you know, can't help you if things, you know, you should be able to ask questions of the people you're working with. Now I do have some people who want to ask you what I call ask holes. Um, they want to ask you a million and one questions. <laughs> don't care about your time. Um, and they, they just, I have a friend of mine who's a client who loves to send me questions and that. That's kind of how my whole social media experience started was I'm tired of answering these questions a thousand times, the same questions. Mm -hmm. So I'll record a video and then when they ask it, I'll just send it to them. So, but it's okay to not understand and not be, you know, it's okay to be ignorant in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's a process of learning and, and developing. So yes, you want somebody you can ask questions to. You also want to be on a journey to educate yourself as much as possible because I say my best clients are informed clients Mm -hmm. because they're proactive. They're talking to me all year long about strategy and how to implement it correctly. And they're, they're doing good books for my business owners and real estate investors. So it, it just, it's good to ask questions, but don't be the person that's just asking a question just for the sake of asking questions. I get people to ask me about trust all the time. You don't even make any money. (laughs) <laughs> right. Why you asked me about trust. <laughs> I was gonna say that sounds like a. I don't want my baby mama to uh, get my uh, get my assets because I've been having been paying. I haven't been paying <laughs> child support. <laughs> and listen, I know I'm joking, right? But that's real, and there are a lot of problems with child support. However, the I feel the energy that we put in trying to dodge child support with with trust would simply be solved just by having a conversation or several conversations and paying your child support. Exactly. That part. Um, Your issues would probably go away. And since we're on the topic of taxes, they will snatch up that refund if you're behind too. So keep yes, that they in will. mind. Yes, they will. <laughs> keep that in mind. So thank you so much, Kamari, for coming back on the show today and shedding light on some of these red flags that people could potentially run into when they're looking at tax professionals or tax preparers. And so I hope people are listening to this episode and take it to heart. It's January. It's time to get your taxes together. Make sure you listen to this episode, share this episode to let people know what they should be looking for so everybody can stay out of tax problems. Um, for the most part, we can't solve everything here on the Money Talk with Tip <laughs> show. But Kamari, if people were interested in finding out more about you, utilizing your services, where could they find you? So if you want to utilize my services, just send me an email, which is kamari at phillytaxteam.com. And I'll spell that out for you. Kamari at phillytaxteam.com, C-A-M-A-R-I at Philly, P-H-I-L-L-Y, tax, T-A-X, team, T-E-A-M.com. Again, Kamari at phillytaxteam.com. And you could also find me on most socials at phillytaxteam, 
Philly.com also, or Philly Tax Team on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on my YouTube. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. So people can get those videos you be sending out to people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for joining me on the podcast again. This was great information and I'm sure it'll help somebody. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Tiff. I appreciate you. All right, bye. Thank you for listening, joining, and being a part of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast this week. You can check Tiff out every Thursday for a new Money Talk podcast. But if you just can't wait until next week, you can listen to previous podcast episodes at moneytalkwitht.com or follow Tiff on all social media platforms at Money Talk with T. Until next time, spend wise by spending less than you make. A word to the money wise is always sufficient.